The days that I get up in the morning and I do a bit of yoga, a bit of meditation, and my spiritual practice are the best. I cannot understand why I feel lazy or uninterested on other days, even though I know that yoga and meditation make me feel good. This is a very common affliction. And it really, in many ways, is just called human, humanness. We have, as humans, we have these minds that are drawn by nature of the fact that it's a human mind, that are drawn into laziness, that are drawn into inertia, that are drawn into complacency. It's just tendencies of the mind. But the mind, the mind is very much like a muscle. Not biologically, it doesn't look like a muscle under a microscope, but it functions very much like a muscle where the way you use it, the way you work it, the way you build it, that becomes the way that the mind is. It's just a lot more subtle and varied and delicate than a muscle. You know, if I work my bicep, for example, it's either going to be flat and fab, flabby or it's going to be you know, rounded and hard, and either I'll be able to curl a lot of weight or I won't. It's just kind of there or not, strong or not. But the mind, the mind is like, if you imagine that this bicep not only would enable me to curl a muscle, but would actually enable me to do anything and everything that I ever wanted to in life. That's, that's the way that the muscle of the mind works, not just strong or not, flabby or hard, macho or weak, but it actually is that which, as it grows, as it gets stronger, enables us to do everything. So just because the nature of the mind, no matter how much we know it makes us feel good, there are mornings where the mind is just like, oh, I'm going to sleep in. Or, oh, I don't feel like it. I'm just going to have my chai or coffee and get on with my day. And it's a tragedy, of course, because not only do we feel so much better, on the given day from having done our meditation and yoga, but actually through doing it on a regular basis, it actually transforms us. So if I work out my biceps enough and I do enough curls, enough days in a row, I'll keep building a muscle. But the mind, when I keep working the mind through my meditation, through my yoga, through my seva, through my mantra jap, it not only gets bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger every day, but it actually changes us. It would be like if along with the bicep growing, your entire body transformed. That's how the mind is. It actually transforms our entire life. And so this is where, it's where discipline comes in. It's where making a, a vow with ourself that I am going to meditate and do yoga every day. Every day. Even if I've only got 30 seconds. 
occasionally there are mornings. You've got a flight to catch. It's an early flight. You were up late in the night. You just can't bring yourself to wake up at, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning in order to have time to meditate before you have to leave to go to the airport. It's okay. It happens. But keep that vow. Even if it's just a minute, you close your eyes and you do the meditation. Even if it's just bending over once and touching your toes, you've done a yoga asana. And what's interesting is that you'll find is it's that first minute that first asana that's the hardest to do. And if you make an absolute kuch bi hojai commitment that you will do one minute of meditation and one asana a day, what you'll find is that that one minute leads into five minutes. The five minutes leads into ten. Because once you start it, then you begin to again taste how good it feels. Once you do one asana, it's very likely that one asana will lead into two asanas or ten asanas because you see how good it feels. But if not, if after one asana, the body still says no more today? Okay. You've done your yoga practice. For whatever reason, maybe that day was a one asana day. Okay. But just commit. Kuch bi hojai. One minute of meditation. One asana. And what you'll find is that not only will that transform your spiritual practice, but that that will actually change how the mind works in so many other circumstances as well. We see it a lot of times also with things like junk food or exercise, right? We know that if we eat five ladoos, we're going to have a tummy ache. But how many of us have ever done that, right? Raise your hand if you've ever eaten too many ladoos or too many gulab jamuns or too many cookies, right? We've all done it. Raise your hand if you've done it more than one time in your life. We're unanimous. And what I love about the fact that not only have we done it once, but we've done it more than once is, the first time you could say, <laughs> we know our stomach is going to hurt. We know that we're going to feel blech. But still we do it. Hopefully not too much. Hopefully we learn as we get older. Hopefully we did most of it when we were younger. But still, you know, you have Diwali, you have a birthday, you have a holiday, you're out at your favorite restaurant. And what you'll find is that as you commit to this one minute of meditation, one asana a day, and I would add to that, the question didn't include it, but I would add one mantra of your japa. So one minute of meditation, one recitation of your mantra, one asana. Kul milake, we're looking at a minute and a half of your time. Nobody can say they don't have a minute and a half. 90 seconds of your life. So if we make that commitment, not only will our meditation practice expand, because chances are you're going to sit longer than a minute. Our yoga practice will expand. Chances are we're going to do more than one asana. 
our jap practice will deepen. We're not going to stop just with one mantra. Once you start, it keeps going, and it keeps going. But along with that, what you'll find is that your tendency to do things that also lead you to not feeling so good, like eating too much sweets, not exercising, staying awake too late, whatever, whatever it may be, you'll find that you stop doing that as well. Because as the mind, as this muscle, gets stronger, it's not just the one way you've exercised it. It gets stronger in every way. So the whole nature of who you are starts to change. The whole nature of the way you move through the world starts to change. And suddenly there's more, I don't like the word discipline so much because it, it feels like we're in boot camp. Like spirituality is, you know, like being in the army. And it's about doing push-ups till your arms hurt. And spirituality is not like that. So I don't like the word discipline. But for lack of a better word in the moment, we'll say you find that in general you are more disciplined, meaning not that you're doing things that you don't like, doing things that are painful just because at some point you're going to get a benefit from it, but rather you are doing things that may be against the flow of the general laziness, against the flow of the general complacency, against the flow of the general wrapping in the veil of maya, against the flow of the general way that our culture is training us to be in terms of decadence and hedonism and all about sort of life as a show, you'll find that you're able to not get caught up in any of those flows and rather to live all of the choices of your life from a place of grounding, a place of consciousness, a place of you as the decision maker rather than some energetic flow that comes in and steals your sadhana. And so you get stronger. You get more anchored. You get more clear. And as you get more anchored and more clear, all of your decisions start to become in alignment with not only that which makes you feel happy and good in the moment, but actually that which is deepening your path bringing you exactly where, where you want to be going.